Hey, what's up, DCS crew? Uh, wow, it is Thursday, July 30th. Uh, it's pocket real estate time. I uh, I figured I'd go ahead and show you what is going in my pocket today. Uh, you've seen a variation of this earlier this month, but I figured I'd just go ahead and throw this out there. And that is the Kershaw bare knuckle uh, in uh, 20 CV steel. This is model 7777BLKSW. That designation is model 7777 bare knuckle uh designation blk for the black scales sw is the designation for stonewash this is from uh kershaw knives us usa line uh and you can see it from the uh, the backwards flag there um and uh you've probably already seen this guy over here which is um you know the the black wash version that i have in 14 c 28 and steel great knife um it sold so well that there was enough demand for uh kershaw to go ahead and tease a uh, an upgraded steel model actually for under a hundred dollars and uh if i recall correctly this was exclusive to uh, a knife retailer the Oh my gosh, I can't believe I, I don't remember exactly who. I bought this off of the retailer. But anyways, um, I, I, I've just, I've been really busy lately, guys. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little off my game today. But in any case, um, so I, I, I wanted to go ahead and talk a little bit about this guy and the reason why he's in my pocket and the reason why I actually bought him. Because, you know, some you come by trade, some, uh, you know, you, you happen to get on the secondary market and some you buy new. This particular one, I actually purchased new, okay? And um, there's there's a lot to like about this knife. Obviously, it's a USA made Kershaw. Um, it is not assisted. It is a subframe lock, uh, much like the Natrix. Great action, great steel, and it sharpens extremely well. There were a lot of glowing reviews on YouTube, and and honestly, aside from being you know somebody who creates content for people to watch when they're bored or when they're taking a dump or whatever, <laughs> you know, I like to actually also uh, watch reviews too. And uh, for some of the longer reviews, actually, I'll, I'll put it on, I'll get in the shower and I'll listen to it as I'm, um, you know, showering because I like to educate myself about things that are going on, you know, within the knife community and, uh, you know, uh, just trends and updates within uh, companies and where they are going to be going as far as uh, with their, their lineups. Um, now, let me go ahead and show off what it looks like. This is the front uh, presentation side. This is the top side right here, nice and centered, as you can see. This is the clip side. This is the back. This is the top. And this is, come on, this is the bottom. All right, now, uh, beautiful sunny day uh, here in uh, in Georgia, so I figured I'd go ahead and take advantage. I, I do have the, uh, oh man, a little smudge. Uh, I do have some sunlight coming in this way, and plus I have my light that comes down here. So uh, bear with me. We're gonna do some comparisons really quick. Um, this is obviously the uh, Spyderco Para 3 in S30V steel. We have the QSP Penguin in D2 steel. I have my uh, another USA made Kershaw. I figured I'd throw back into the mix. Stonewash blade, black aluminum scales. That's the Kershaw blur. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, the Rake P108SF. Great, uh, great knife. I always tell people, you know, I saw the SF and I was like, oh, cool, stonewash finish. Yeah, no, that's satin finish. What a blunder. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's the CJRB feldspar. That's the small version, and uh, we have a, yeah, we do, we do. We have an auto here. This is the Les George SBR um, by Protec Knives. This is the knurled, knurled handle with the stonewash blade. Great little knife. And uh, last but not least, I'll go ahead and throw this guy in here for the USA made knife. This is the Kershaw, <laughs> the Kershaw. The Spyderco knives, uh, little native with uh, flitanium scales that have been anodized uh, blue and then stonewash S30V steel. So uh, back to the knife. Now, um, <clears throat> there was a lot of uh, things that, that brought me, you know, to picking up this knife. Um, a lot of things that I just, uh, questions that I, I, I wanted to have answered. And then aside from that, um, you know, I, I, I got to actually see it in person. I got to see the, the variant, which is uh, this guy. And I keep it in this pouch because I don't have the original box. Um, this one right here. I'm pretty sure you guys have, have seen the, the, the video I did on this one. It has a little bit of a story. If you haven't, feel free to go ahead and check that out. Uh, shout out to Bug Out Boy. Uh, B-U-G 
O-U-T-B-O-I on Instagram if you want to go ahead and give him a follow. I actually got that from him. So um, I actually saw that version at Blade Show. And, uh, you know, it's, nothing, it's no secret. This, this knife has been out for a little while. But um, sometimes when something comes out, it comes out and, and it's a little too good to be true. Um, you know, you have the, the first uh, non-assisted USA-made Kershaw knives flipper that has, uh, you know, a nice uh, lock to it. It's not a liner lock. Um, you know, upgraded steel, very nice ergos. It's based on a ZT. Uh, and, and there's just, there was just a lot to like about this. And it was like, wow, that's good. A little a little too good. <laughs> so I waited a little bit and I wanted to see if maybe, you know, um, it, it had some bugs, you know, or things that people didn't like, or if it was going to be one of those little failures and stuff like that. And the truth is it ended up being a really good quality, uh, knife, you know? So I'm like, okay, let me just go ahead and pick it up while they still have the upgraded versions, uh, exclusive to, I believe, man, I want to say it's Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, I, I could be wrong, but in any case, um, uh, you know, I, I got it, and I put it in the hand and I'm like, wow, okay, this is pretty good. I started using a little bit. And if you notice, you know, the grind is a little bit high here. And that's because um, I took it onto the uh, the KME. And uh, after I had used it quite a bit, I put a nice fresh, uh, you know, uh, level edge. You know, I made sure the grind was even on both sides. And uh, I took it to about 600 grit. And then I, you know, I dropped it and I put it away. And this thing is ridiculously sharp. And, um... I, you know, I, I didn't kill the edge, so I'm really proud about that, you know, and that's the reason why I'm showing it off here. And uh, aside from that, you know, the action is actually really good. It's on bearings. Um, and, you know, Kershaw didn't disappoint. They they skimped where they could, and then they, they added, you know, the important details and stuff where they needed to. Now, granted, 20 CV for under 100 bucks is never going to be the highest performing 20 CV that you've ever seen in your life. Hands down, bar none, better than any other steel in the world. It's just not going to be like that. But the fact is, it is, you know, it's very corrosion resistant. Um, this particular one takes a very nice edge. Um, it cuts well. The blade profile is really, really good. The um, the profile in the hand, actually, it fits extremely well. There's a little bit of a, a kind of like a curvature over here. And then uh, it naturally guides your thumb to be able to go ahead and hit these uh, the, the right here in the, 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 the spine of the blade where there's um, some jimping. And you'll have to forgive me when I went like this earlier and uh it hit my my thumb as you can see it can kind of attest to the fact that it's a little it's a little um a little sharp because it did bite me so um now uh this kind of solidified my uh thoughts on this particular knife as being and and get this okay um you know how they have kershaw and then there's zt um i've always seen like kershaw is kind of like you know the other brother to, to, to ZT. There's ZT knives and then like a Kershaw in other rooms, they're like, oh my God. And then, you know, the Kershaw's like, hey guys, can I sit with you? And they're like, no, you can't. You got to sit over there with the simps. Um, and this, and I want to say, okay, this will be a little controversial, but I will say this, the blur and the knockout are the ones that if like ZT was like beating up on a cheap little Kershaw and trying to shove them in the lockers. Any one of those will come out and be like, hey, leave that guy alone. And, you know, ZT knives would be like, oh, shit, it's, you know, bare knuckle <laughs> or blur or, you know, knockout. Let's well, let's go ahead and leave them alone. Like, I think that there's enough respect behind uh, this particular model and those particular models to say that these can easily have uh, they can, can hold their own among the, the zero tolerance knives. Um, and especially the ones that are coming out now, um, it used to be that, you know, ZT had some really nice overbuilt knives. And, and just as a testament to that, you know, I have stuff like this guy right here, you know, the ZT, the, the 0801 TI, it's a Todd Rex, Rexford design. I mean, this thing is a tank, especially, I mean, look, you put it next to it, you can clearly see it's a freaking tank compared to it. It's it's thicker. It's got, you know, it's got beefier handles. It's a bigger, wider blade, you know, S35VN, which is, 
in my opinion, all honesty, you know, just as good as 20 CV, you know, when it's done via production, that you, obviously you can heat treat it better and you can heat treat it worse than, you know, 20 CV. But I mean, when it comes to production companies, there's very little difference between S35 yen and, and 20 CV. But moving on, you know, uh, there, there was an, there's a substantial pricing difference between something like this that you could have gotten if it's still available, it would go for like about $89.99 on, you know, the general market and something like this, which will go close to 200, if not more with all the mods and stuff that have been done to it, because this was just a standard model. I had anodized and did all this other shit to it and whatever. In any case, um, you know, it's like back then they used to make tanks. And nowadays, they, I, I kind of feel like they're they're kind of delving away to that and they're trying to appeal to a larger market, a broader market. And Kershaw is actually doing the same thing, but they're kind of delving into taking a little bit of the ZT market because they're, you know, and, and it's kind of weird because it's it's almost like they're at odds with each other, but they're part of the same team. You know what I'm saying? It's like two people on the same team, you know, and everybody's telling them that they're badass and they're great and everything. And then they start to look at each other and it's like, well, there can only be one. So who's it going to be? Well, you put this guy in the ring, you put the knockout in the ring, you put the blur and eh, maybe, maybe the link. But I'll, I'll say, you know, honestly, the knockout and the, uh, the, the bare knuckle. I would put them against most of the current uh, ZT lineup and say that they could hold their own. If not, you know, be, be taken, um, into consideration a lot more than the ZT lineup. For one, because it, they have ZT-esque materials, you know, you have the Knockout and M390 and 20CV and all these other, you know, uh, super steels. And then you have, you know, the, the the cheaper version in case the guy isn't, you know, uh, isn't money enough to be able to go ahead and pick up those upgraded versions. You do have knives like this one um, that's still very stylish, has that green handle, you know, the black wash uh, blade in 14C28N. And there's also the, the um, the variant in uh, for the knockout and you know I had a, a, a blue uh, and, and a black washed uh, M390 knockout and I sold it and I feel like an idiot for doing that because the truth is it was a great knife it's kind of one of those that you know they come around every now and then and I just I should have kept it I've had like three of them during my time and I don't know why I got rid of it but this is something that I'm not going to get rid of in fact I went ahead and I picked up the variant because it's something that I wanted to make sure that I had and I'd also like to get the gray handled version uh, so if you happen to see that for a good deal on the secondary go ahead and hit your boy up I'd be more than happy to go ahead and take that off of somebody's hands but that being said this is going to be in my pocket today uh, this is my pocket real estate, second to last day of uh, PRE. And it's unfortunate because I've been having a really good time doing this with you guys. Uh, you know, unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. And hopefully tomorrow uh, will be something special. I do have something that, that I am going to be, uh, I'm considering carrying. And it comes with a little bit of a story. So hang tight for that. But in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching. And just remember, guys, whether it's 14C28, whether it's 20 CV, hell, whether it's D2, just remember guys, if you EDC, think of DCS. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to go and hit me up in the comments below or contact me via Instagram at Daily Carry Solutions if you have any questions uh, or my website at the contact page and I'd be more than happy to go ahead and respond to you. I'm Carlos, you guys have been great. I'm out, peace.